Here we go. Ah. Okay. Any power pack? Okay. Miss Rush's blood that I can to see. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. In this voice proves that New Holland and New South Wales were connected. In publishing his charts, Swindles proposed that the name be named Australia, or Terra Australis. Governor Macquarie re recommended adopting the name in 1839, but the Admiralty opposed this. Australia gradually entered common usage. Okay. Wow. He opposed it. Yeah. So we meant to be called Terra Australis. Yeah, Terra Australis means Australia. Yeah. The 22 scientists and blessings of the first consul in the Poland Boulevard, the expedition was the most lavishly equipped I've ever we France. Captain Nicholas Gordon's mission was to chart Nobel's alarm's mysterious southern coast, to study its plants, animals and minerals, and to observe the native peoples in their natural state. Departing France in October 1800, the Corvettes the geograph and the naturalist made two voyages surveying the south and west coast of Australia. They were tough voyages over three and a half years. Wow. And tensions rankled between the commander and his scientists. Many deserted, and scurvy and dysentery ravaged the crew. In April 1802, Borden reached the southern coast and named it Terra Napoleon, land of Napoleon. Wow. Gordon could not glory his in his discoveries. Tragically, he died on a return voyage at Ilaire de France, Mauritius. The expedition accounts was penned by his rival studiologist Francis Perron, and Borden was written out of history. Oh, wow. oh. Nice. So Francis claimed all the work. Yeah. <laughs> claimed the fame. Yeah. Let's go through this one again. <laughs> <laughs> windlass. This windlass was used to raise and lower cargo through hatchways in the floors. Using the windlass, a person could lift about ten times as much as they could unassisted. <coughs> but it was slow. One full turn of the wheel was wide only 66 centimetres above. So wow. Much. <laughs> Hard work, man. Yeah, I reckon. Imagine it being low. Check out the swivel gun. Mac Mackerson swivel gun. This iron muzzle loaded swivel gun was retrieved by Adelaide merchant and mining agent Dan Sawyers from a car on a peninsula in Darwin Harbour in 1908. It was probably brought to the Northern Territory by Mackerson fishermen collecting tree pan, sea cucumber. The gun may have been cast in Asia to a European design. The voyage from Makassar in Sulawesi to Australia was 1,600 kilometres and 10 to 15 days to sail. On board HMS Investigator NATO through Matthew Flinders encountered six Makassar prowls fishing for three pang off Arnhem Island. Uh, the vessels were armed with small cannons. Hmm. Mounted on the gunwales of a boat or edge of a camp, swivel guns were mainly used for close range combat. They fired half pound shots. 225 grams, land rage, loose scrap iron, or grape shot. While well, several other swivel guns have been found on the northwest and northern coast of Australia, this gun is a unique design that is believed to date from the 17th or 18th century. Wow. Just yeah. before we were born, mate. Yeah, just a little bit. Oh, oh, he's, the he's a model. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> Here's the boat they were talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The geography was not in. Commanded by Nicholas Bolden and carrying a uh, hundred men, the giraffe, geograph, <laughs> giraffe, <laughs> led the French expedition to explore the coast of Australia from October 1800 to March 1804, which was accompanied by the store ship, the naturalist. Geograph was a floating laboratory, home to artists, botanists, zoologists, mineralogists and their collections. The live animal specimens were so important they were given cabin space and fresh food and back oh, wow. which had been allocated to the crew. The crew, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the crew were happy about that. The crew was starving. 
Originally named Galati, Geograph was a corvette, the smallest class of naval ship. It was a fast ship, it had a deep draft, it could not get close to the shore. Okay, because of that. Yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. For that reason, in 1802, bought in purchased the small locally built schooner, Casarina, in Port Jackson to explore the southern gold. He appointed surveyor Lewis oh, Frasch, I've heard him, I've heard his name, yeah. Lewis Frasch in that as commander. Okay. Imagine being on there for four years. Yeah. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> These guys are Oh, he's an investigator. Yep. These guys are incredible. Well, that's where that is from. Yeah. That anchor. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What to say about that one? I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Guys, guys, look at this amazing story. Yeah. Okay. okay. We carried a crew of 78, a team of six scientists, their servants, and trim the cat. Trim the cat? Oh, trim the cat. Okay. Okay. Investigator was their home from July 1801 when it left Britain to June 1803, two years, when the ship was condemned as unseaworthy in Port Jackson. From the start of the voyage, the ship began to rot. Oh, great. Yeah, make slow progress and exhaust the crew with its endless leaks. Fantastic. For two years they put up with it. Yeah. Investigator was built in 1795 as a coal lighter on the English coast and was originally named Xenophon. <laughs> it was purchased by the Admiralty, refitted and renamed Flinders Voyage for Flinders Voyage. The ship was well suited to exploration because it had a large cargo capacity and a shallow draft. Yeah which allowed it to hug the shoreline for close coastal survey. Ultimately, the investigator avoided being scuttled and was pared down and re-rigged. In 1805, it returned to England carrying it, expedition botanist Robert Brown and artist Ferdinand Bell. Uh, wow, well, yeah. it was fixed up after yeah. all that after rotten. Yeah, right. Rotten away. I still wouldn't trust it. I wouldn't have liked to be on it. Oh, here's some crabs. Looks like okay. a blue swimmer. Yeah, blue swimmer crab. There it is. Crabs from another off. Branches from often place collecting over caution. On Bernier Island, Shark Bay in July 1801, he recalled that while exploring a reef, a mountainous wave broke and threw him across the shore and festive rock. My clothes were torn to pieces and I was covered with cuts and blood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's have a look at that. Crazy body guy. Yeah. <laughs> is this the investigator? Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. This come off the investigator, that's amazing. Wow. They got a, an 18 notes, it went down as a oh, rig. Really? Yeah. 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 HMN yes. investigator reached the western end of the Great Australian Bight in May 1803. The ship landed at Middle Island and the crew went ashore to hunt geese. Flex off, cut forward, and ball down seaboard. Preparing to leave, the anchors dragged and fresh wind threatened to blow the ship ashore. That's a solid thing, man. <coughs> Flinders gave orders to cut the oh, okay, that's it. Flinders gave orders to cut the anchor ca anchor cables and sail out to sea, abandoning two anchors. He recorded their position in his journal, longitude 123, 12, 5, east, latitude 30, 5, south. It was amazing, I never knew this was that. 170 years later, in 1973, a South Australian expedition led by Doug Seaton, relocated Flinders anchors. Doug claimed the Bower anchor for South Australia. This one, I think. Ooh, yeah. This ignited a battle between West Australia, South Australia, and Commonwealth and Britain, all claiming ownership of the relics. The smaller stream anchor is now owned by the National Museum of Australia. Yeah. So in 1973, I think, yeah. he retrieved this from the, the record of 1803. Wow. That is incredible. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. Clark of memory card. That's something to do with the investigators there. Really. Obviously they've redone it up behind mm -hmm. it. That's the original one, I take it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Ready? Yep. Voyaging near present day Port Lincoln in early 1802. Matthew Flinders sweet HMS investigator met with tragedy. Eight men, including Flinders, first mate, and friend John Thistle, perished. 
when their boat capsized returning from the mainland to look for fresh water. The extensive search failed to recover the bodies and Flinders assumed they had been taken by sharks. The death deaths shocked the ship. To mark the loss, Flinders instructed his crew to make this copper plaque. He nailed it to a post at a place he named Memory Cove and gave to each of the six islands nearest to Cape Catastrophe the name of one of the seamen. Oh. Plaque carries oh, people don't know. Oh, really? The plaque carries the warning. Naughty Sailor Cadet. Sailors beware. Okay. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. It is one of the first European objects left on the southern coast. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah, and now it makes you want to go visit Memory Cove. Yeah, and he was a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can do that. <laughs> we can. Okay. You game to try? Oh, I'm going to good luck. Okay, thank you. This explains longitude, your location east or west. Did you know the Earth spins on its axis once every 24 hours? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Given us day and night and different zones. Apart from when we had the tsunami, it can get knocked off the track of the Turn the handle so that the pointer's shadow is on South Australia. This is midday local time when the sun is at the highest point in the sky. Okay, so all right, that's pretty much in South Australia. But you want to go to midday? Oh, that time says for night time in the day time in Greenwich. Okay. Look at the clock and see what the time is at Greenwich. When it is midday in South Australia, this time difference tells you what the longitude. Oh. So it's Three o'clock in Greenwich. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you about? No, don't know. Don't know. <laughs> Love my pay grade. Oh, they've got a thing over imaginary. Ah, uh, oh, okay. So your longitude is nine degrees. Time location over there. The Greenwich time is, is the um like oh. the main main time. You're always so many hours away from Greenwich time. I'm not oh, certain where Greenwich time. Where is Greenwich? Greenwich. <laughs> um probably up oh, Greenwich time. Yeah. We've kept here. <laughs> Greenwich wind time clock was kept here. The line um, through the centre of the zoo, which represented the primary and north longitude. Right. Oh, I was getting into this. <laughs> Here's another one. I'm not a match. I'm not a match. Finding the manipulation, that's to do with um, stars. Oh, okay. See the angle of the earth in relation to the sun at different times of the year. Look at the white pointer to see the declination. Okay. <laughs> um, so you've got, you've got the, the time of the thing there. So we're in spring, we're in spring. September. It's right down about where we are. Okay, where's the white pointer? <laughs> Oh, there's a lot. Oh, the white point of yeah. yeah. And that tells you. Um, Declaration is 23 south. Oh, no, 22 south. Yeah. Um, and a couple of degrees. Oh, okay. And the black point is somewhere around. Yeah. South of the world is just the. Where's the black point? Where is it? 
Black Point around, did he? No, I think it's Black Point. Maybe a sextant will help you. Sextant? Yeah. <laughs> it's more. Yeah. I'm not going to help me more. Isn't the model of sextant? It shows how to measure the angle of the sun from the current location in relation to the horizon. Did you know? Sightings of the sun were taken at midday. When the sun was at its highest point in the sky, sightings could also be taken using the stars and moon. Find the angle of the midday sun above the horizon. Turn the dial once. Light up one of the dates on the ship's log. Turn the dial one. Then you smash on the studio. Too hard, too hard. I think we must be about exhausting. Yeah. Except for the swimsuits. And the, po like the pokey machines. Yeah, predating poker machines. Yeah. Heaven and hell. <laughs> <laughs> Be impressed. No, I think we've done this part. Yeah, we've done that bit. Well, I was thinking it was over there. 